Yeah, generations after coming, that this space get kupuna left, and because of that, the entire 1,200 acres was placed on the National Registry of Historic Places, the largest plot of the largest acreage of land ever placed on the registry in America. It's right over here, and I for a fact know that nobody know the names because the earliest kupuna. Carbon dated back was 300 AD. They even have the fucking Bible then. Everybody's still talking stories. So I know for a fact nobody know. Oh, this guy, he think his genealogy right before Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Right before Jesus came. You know you're Jesus. This fucker was here, Ken. That's why you don't know the name, Ken. Well, and that's it. It's your, science, it's your science told the world. Of our kupuna's existence. You gonna deny that? Hey, it's about being... It's about caring enough to be informed. So, that's it. You know, they, they tried to bring somebody from the Cummins <coughs> Ohana, you know, for shut us down. And I told them, okay, where you been the last 80 years? Where you been the last 70 years, 50 years? About three years ago, where you was? <laughs> and now you step up and say, oh, this my Ohana's Kuleana. No. no, it's no longer your Ohana's Kuleana because my uncle Hana P was the one who would negotiate in the Smithsonian right. to bring back the ever repatriate the first ever indigenous EV in the world before us had Africans waiting for this stuff to be returned from Europe. Never did. Hawaiians was number one. We're the first in line. We set precedence. I said one year after that, they flew back and Guess who didn't receive the EV? Guess who didn't receive the kupuna when they landed here on the tarmac? It was my mom and Mahanai father. I said them two, plus Hale Aloha Ayao, was the three who didn't repatriate the kupuna at Sher Woods. So you telling me that you get kuleana here? I was literally born into this. Those kupuna who don't know your name, relying on us for keeping protected. Now tell me your history again. Fucking cannot. Just qualify the witness right over here. <laughs> Fucker just in chew him up. <laughs> you know when Kuike left, he was wearing two right slippers, care. And this fucker. <laughs> on a no. size 14 right. <laughs> Bruh. I'll go jump in the back of him if you can. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know what to say, by the way, so whatever, nah. guys. No, we just we just talking story. You know, what we found, Kuike, and it and it's and it's the truth of of just the time we live in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know why? You know why? This might require is kind of like okay. close. No and you can actually. Yeah. No, no, he plays the ukulele. No, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Can we leave over here? We'll go see how the thing stops. You gotta hold this too. Yeah, no, that one, that one is. Okay, 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 good. He said he bought half off, but it was only half good when he didn't use them. That's the Kaokai. That's the Kaokai. But he also knows I'll call Fidget, so perfect. Yeah, Fidget like a motherfucker. I see myself like. You know what it is, you know what it is. In real life, you think he's still playing baseball. <laughs> Fuck again. Run and run. Run. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check, Daniel. Oh, my check over here. How's that? Hello. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Guy Mike. 65. Easy, eh? The bus. Fucking silk. <laughs> 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 Oh, your turn? Oh, fuck, you dropped off. Test, test. There you go. I'll just put him closer. Is it the wire? Check off our way, how you had him? Test, test. Close Test, test. We well, gotta eat gotta the mic. Close. You're gonna be the real Panther Jacket with Pop Gordon. I'll jump off. Okay, okay.
Check, check, one, two. Mic check. You're live. Uncle, what week is this? What week are we in? Week three or four? Week four. Bruh. Week four. First week with guests. We doubling up on the guests over here. Four, four, four. <laughs> four, four. This week four. This is my this is my dad joke of the day. If you're watching this episode and you watch all of the other three episodes, you need friends. Nah. <laughs> 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 all, all the fathers laughing. <laughs> now, here's one. Here's one for anybody who sees this fourth episode that can tell us we did in the third, second, and first one. We give you a special prize because we don't know what we were talking about. Nah, nah. Welcome. This is uh, what the fourth episode. Hello, cult. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Well, we have two guests today. I'm going to let Kawe introduce his guests, yeah, yeah. and then I'll introduce my guests over here in the back. We'll start it up with that. Go yeah. for it, Uncle Kawe. Welcome, you guys. Yep, yeah, week four, uh, Color Culture. Uh, my special guest, our special guest, your special guest, is uh, Kuike. I'm going to hello. Hello, my Kako. Yeah, mahalo for having me. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii. Ine. Nice to be here. I'm in the back over here. I got the one and only Mr. Malama Aina himself, Chance Correa from Yee. Malama Aina Landscape Masonry Design. Overall, genuine love of the Aina. Yeah, you mahalo for having me here. <laughs> well. I think we'll start it off with um, checking in on the Kahlo real quick. Uncle Kahlo, how's the Kahlo this week? Kahlo check up this week. Put about, I think, uh, 300 pounds of taro. Um, all came from Kahana this week. Uh, a lot of it is kapa'aloa. Get plenty uh, available. Uh, we're having that this evening to eat. Um, one more patch got planted and... Uh, other plastic I planted last time got burlap. Okay, so we real quick, since we're on the topic of Kahana, here's my question I gotta ask you guys. This is out to, to these to these fine gentlemen over here. Okay, so my grandpa, he sends me a text message. He says he's got about three hundred extra huli if we wanted any to plant. So, um, you know, I went, I'm gonna go take a look. Ah, we know more really the space, so I'd say eight grams. We know more really the space for plant right now. We're still prepping these patches. Uh, we have to pass. So he, he messages me back. He goes, eh, I think he misunderstood me. <laughs> so he called me. Yeah, I call him today. He says, call me. So I call him today. He goes, oh, can you come and meet with me? Because um, go get this. He looking for a place for plant his 300 hooli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking anywhere outside the fence, right? Mm -hmm. It's available. Hooli planting space, right? No, no. My, 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 my answer would be like, no. The real question is, how much work do you let Grandma do back? And she already made a request to stop. Yeah. We just See, need two again. I like the way Uncle Carl put him. Blame Grandma. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You've been pulling weeds all the time, ba? The conversation ends there. It ends with Grandma. <laughs> and we already were told, not for ready. Just do yours then. So be good with her. 30. See, this is why Kawe and I were good partners out there in Kahana. Good. Because yeah. no. I, mean, I, I try and full figure out the smallest piece of land I can give my grandpa, but he's like that porcupine that put one foot in a tent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, we can re -put the, they say, uh, you know, you sleeping outside the tent. We can re put the fence up. I have one area, actually, for 300. We put a kind over there, you know, I cut it down. You know where we put the fence up? Oh, yeah. Down by the kind. We have some technical issues right now, you guys. Uh, if you have a chance, um, don't go to Best Buy and look on the bargain table for... No, no. I just <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Best Buy. You guys are awesome. <laughs> How's it? Can you hear? Oh. Check, check. Can you Yes, sir. Uh, back on track. Yes. So, what? I mean... Yeah! <laughs> we get special guests, you said. 
yes, 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 yes. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, live and healthy. Yes, uh, live and healthy. Yeah, yeah. I guess my my real question, Kuike, yeah, is is what farmer doesn't have the challenge of making it nice, of securing it, and then having someone want to jump in on that? And then how do you be respectful when dealing with family, especially Kupuna, knowing that, you know, fuck up. I would gladly clear one whole space and fence them in and do whatever, you know. Ah, we would cut one whole new area, but there's just how do you what what is a a safe or respectable mechanism? Because that's always a challenge, right? Yep. You make them nice and then they like sell them, yep. or now they like half. Yeah. But when it was ugly, they never care. Right, right, <laughs> right. And this is one of the things I think that kills the heart of mahi ai and people that aloha aina when they feel like abused, mm -hmm. when people low value that hard work that they put into it and see it as something like, ah, I just gonna, I just gonna take some, look, look, look all this land you get, huh? But not recognizing like, hey, we're trying to build a system. The system takes a lot of land. Mm -hmm. It fortunately in Kahana get land. Right. So you know what I'm saying? Why are we scrapping over the fence area? Let's just go scrap some unfence area and fence right, them right. in. Amen. You know, like. Right. So, I mean, for, for me, you know, I, I look at this differently. Yeah, I look at it, you know, from a financial or economic perspective, you know. Pops is trying to invest his 300. Why wait nine months for the return? Why wait 12 months for the ROI? Every week, you can come. Every time we pull, Pops, I'll give you three pounds. Yeah, three pounds, 10 months later, you know, 100 months later, whatever. You can always eat. Yeah. That's all Papa like eat. You know, yeah, he like his collar look pretty, but you can plant that area anyways. You can just have pops, yeah, free the area kalo. Because we all know that he's not going to eat 300 kalo one time. So for me, is <laughs> mahalo for your investment. Even though I cannot get to him right now, we'll put him in buckets, keep him alive. But whatever kalo you need for, you know, the value of the 300 huli, I got you, pops. Boom. That's it. Walk away. No need to go plant today. No, yeah. Win, win. He's been observing, he's been observing the, the gray truck come and then full of kalo. Leave <laughs> and yeah, I have to get over some things, but you know, it is what it is. You know, just describing that and asking a question almost bring me to tears. That, you know, you, you talk like that, you know, uh, the value of it and the the unforeseen stuff like that, giving tremendous value to that. Uh, unfortunately, that you know, and then yeah, but. In that this particular case, we gotta look at it in honor. Yep. With honor, that um, he even went asked that, and, and thank you, bro, because I never look at him. I look at him from a punk grandson point of view. <laughs> that you mean? hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. And eighty six now. You know, I met him when he was eighty three. I get it, and as much time as we can spend, because that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe we're not able to plant that area today. But that area is going to be planted whether it's his, his huli or not. And in honor of Papa, we're going to call him his kona because it was already meant to be. But if Kalo is, is what he needs today and for the duration of her, for the rest, the rest of his the life, rest bro. Of his life, and that's it. And that's how we're going to honor our kupuna. You know? But we also got to remember, like Uncle Skippy said, the forest only green when the tree green. <laughs> So you got to sustain yourself, simultaneously sustaining the ohana. Yeah. So again, all you know, looking at things, makavaluing everything. Makavalu, I. We got to definitely, in the same stroke and mana and words that we honor our kupuna, you got to live for the future as well. That's the only way we're gonna honor them. Yeah. Beyond their years, yeah, perpetuate their legacy, and I believe that's what you two have been doing. And that's what you two gonna be doing, and that's what your kick is gonna for, do forever. Love you guys. Bro, my hello, bro. I love you, bro. Yes, sir. Fuck us, I'm crying. Shit. That's a, that's a beautiful sight seeing my kids do this, bro. Yes, bro. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Seeing all of our kids, bro. Boom. Be raised up like this. Yeah. And uh, being immersed in this kind of stuff, you know, we, 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 some of us was fortunate to have the opportunity when we was young. Yeah. Some of us, and, 
even though it was junk at the time, you look at him now like, wow, ah, he's kind of <laughs> lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you how much my legs used to itch? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whether it's in the lot or in the local ER, it's always itchy. <laughs> Okay, yeah. you're special, bro. You're in favorite of many. So many. everybody was vying for making you hear that child. Yes, uh, <laughs> oh, he's mine. Oh, no, 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 no. That's mine. I created that. Yeah. You know, you. Unfortunately, because of that, I was always overweight. But yeah, <laughs> a favorite of many, that's definitely. Yeah. Boy, come eat. <laughs> but yes, I was uh, always fortunate to eat from the tables of, with, with the kupuna. Eat from the umeki of the, the kupuna, not only the physical food, but the spiritual, emotional, and psychological food as well. Aye. All the lessons. Aye. Speaking of which, Kuike, super happy that, that you're around, bro. Well, we need you to be a kupuna, bro. That's one of the yes, ultimate, sir. ultimates of this generation. You got to stay alive. Mm, yeah. You know, um, a few years ago, when we was uh, in the sandbox with the city and county of Honolulu, <laughs> Yeah, fighting over um, space, uh, real estate, and uh, <clears throat> burning their toys. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I thought deeply because we were, we had opposition that were kupuna, and I had to remind them that you're talking to tomorrow's kupuna today. Be weary, be aware, there be makaala who you talk to, because you're talking to tomorrow's kupuna today so yes i understand the sentiment of time and age and years but there's nothing there's no reason why we cannot be the kupuna we will be tomorrow today Aye. and that was that was one of my messages that i was trying to promote out there and just push out there you know to get our people to understand is how you behave today is how you're gonna behave tomorrow yeah so make the adjustments yeah so when you tack you hit home. You land on the shores that you're supposed to be. You know, you land where you're supposed to be. So, no wait, guys. Act like tomorrow's kupu, not today. Aye. That way, I will make them easier for our keiki. Because the, because the society has ripped our ohana units apart. No longer, yeah, is it, I mean, I'm not saying no longer because I see it every day, but not as frequently as it used to be. Yeah, the pilina, the relationship between the mo'opuna and the kupuna. Because the kupuna still got to go work. How many kupuna you see behind the cashier at 7-Eleven? Yeah. Yeah. Earning a living because of the circumstances we live in. So that takes away from the pilina between them and the mo'opuna. So the stories, the lessons, the skill sets are no longer passed on. So now the makua got to awamo that kuleana. So you makua out there, no wait. Now is the time. Yeah, because tomorrow's mm. past is today's present. The urgency for sure <laughs> is is above and beyond the get off your ass and and start living it. I mean, without a doubt, that's that's kind of one of the things that Ko and I have just seen is that. Right, if no one going to malama these varieties, the next generation might not have chance. And we're really in so many different avenues. It seems like the inundation, you know, these guys good at attacking you from all different angles. And it seems like every type of Kanaka profession that there's out there, from the fishermen to the farmers to the astronomers, they all get one battle. And it feels like, and I and I could be just phased by the by the bright lights nowadays, but it feels like we might be in a generation of, of maybe winning a couple of these and maybe flipping the script on the expectations. You know, I think before they kind of just had this idea that the opposition was going to somehow just dissipate. You know, yeah. they was going to go over there. You're going to state why you never like them. And then tomorrow. Hey, don't sell them short. Yeah. Their game plan is a military one. Yeah. And they've been winning. Our history shows that they've they've been winning against us. And this is their game plan, and this will never change. Look up this word and define it. Attrition. They win through attrition. Yeah, it's not, as Uncle Skippy said again, it's not how hard you punch back, it's how long you can punch for. Yeah, we need to stay in this fight. 
So you very you're right. You are on point as always, Brother Daniel. You know. Makaalakako. Yeah. Attrition is how they win. Yeah. But the the generation and the generation after them is looking bright. Bright. Because in their Ohanas, they get their Kais and their Kaleos and their Nanis and their Lanis. Yeah? And they love everything and hard for not love your Mo'opuna or hard for not love the babies. Yeah? And like, I don't know, like Dad said, but what is good for Hawaiians is good for everybody. We make the fish pond. We don't, we don't make, give you, we don't teach you for fish. We just make one fish pond for everybody. How's about that? Better. <laughs> Concentrate on something else. Yeah, the, the lo'i full, the fish pond full. It's the, the belly full. The belly full. And we can be other things, yeah? Weavers and navigators and carvers and artisans, master craftsmen. But if the two other basic things not there, you, your culture, no more even time for any of that. Yeah, well, when you're eating all that foreign food, huh? Yes. And then you just end up living like an alternate life. Like almost like we was living in the, in the, uh, already had the internet and we was already living in the web, but was actually just living this Western foreign existence completely, completely, 1000%. No idea. Had no idea. Yeah. Lost in the light. One positive thing that we get nowadays is the fact that we get alternatives to that difference that we had no idea about. Yeah? And one of the things that we have, I guess, about a chance and what he provides and the business and his whole mindset and the concepts of Malama Aina and, and, and when sustainable, I think we talk about them, bugger heavy. <laughs> landscape industry and kind of just make a change the way things is being done um, there's better ways to do things um, I mean honestly from my grandma what she taught me and how to malama our yard and I mean, we never use chemicals why would we spray it in your yard if we not spray it in ours so that was instilled in me from a young age the importance of just being sustainable, growing your own food, doing it the right way. What you put in is what you get. And um, kind of push that into the company and different alternatives other than the use of chemicals. And that's where steam came into play. Yeah, me, and me. Me, that. that instead of Roundup. Utilizing some KNF solutions from Oloha Organics mm -hmm. for pest control, fertilization, all the good stuff. There's other ways to do it. I mean, everybody just taking a shortcut. And that's the end result of the shortcut is that's why everyone's unhealthy with the cancers and diabetes. Gotta go back to the root. Aye. It's good you, you just touched upon what Koike was talking about, that without that influence from your tutu, that was vital, yeah. Hey, landscapers, they farmers too. You're yeah, farming yeah. grass, bro. The thing about grass is the number one farm agricultural crop in the world. Yeah, <laughs> grass. So they just, the landscapers, they just smart farmers. They know <laughs> which side of the field is greener, yeah, what they're working on. Um, no, no, tell me chance. You know, I think this is from, from our side. <laughs> As, as anybody that is in the field knows, um, weed strategy is critical. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you can just, when you get lost in the weeds, that's like, seems like one joke when you, when you are on the stock market and shit, but when you're really on your farm and you get lost yeah. in the weeds, like, oh. yeah. I mean, you know, we get some, we get some friendships that maybe got, got tampered because had weeds. No, I think, I think, I think weeds uh, uh, deter a lot of people and, Chase people away from the vision and you cannot see past the weeds of farming. And it's either go rent one dozer, which is, is it costs money. Yeah. Yeah. Costs money for do something like that. And and so one alternative now is you get one there's an alternative. Yeah. Once on steam, you go steam everything and start from scratch. Yeah. And you know, um, I just want to jump in this too. I mean, an alternative is also to redefine what 
the word weeds mean? Because who told you that's what weeds are? <laughs> right? Who yeah. told you the pharmaceutical medicines is good for you? You know, who told you McDonald's will keep you alive a long time? I bet you believe it. And that's it. Yeah. In addition to putting in the Hana, we gotta have the Ike. We gotta have the knowledge. We gotta have the ability to have the, the sight and see who really fucking us in the ass. Hold on, wait, can I swear? <laughs> yeah, man. I, mean, I know it's it, a family whatever. show, I'm sorry. <laughs> This couch is too comfortable. I just feel like myself. You know? <laughs> I just feel like myself. You know? Hey, okay, make but, the beep. But, but, <laughs> the roof. But, but, I mean, <laughs> I mean we, we understand the way landscape has been happening for years now, for decades now, that is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. looks pretty. Yeah. yeah. But so do the people with 10 pounds of makeup. And yeah. what happens when they go home? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And wash everything away. Yeah. I bet you don't see pictures of that. But that's not what they sell you in the magazine. That's my point. Redefine what those words mean. Who told you those are weeds? Everything in this world has a purpose. Yeah. And even you, person buying grass. <laughs> you know, look for more sustainable solutions, guys. More earth-friendly solutions. More human-friendly solutions. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, well, it's your fault. Don't we'll blame anybody else that when you, you know, have these ailments that was previously mentioned, yeah? Remember, it's nobody's cool on but yourself. So, mahalo, bro. I mean, I've seen, you know, the county of Maui, you know, try use steaming for, um, eliminate the bullgrass along the sides of the highway. I've seen oh, them yeah. use goats as well. I mean, these are the kind of concepts or or ideas that we should be adopting. Yeah. Or at least you do Try trials. Em. Try them. So if you're looking for a landscaping company, what's the company again? Malama Aina Landscape. How do we get a, a hold of you? You can hit me up at 808-782-4794 or malamaainalandscape.com. Roger. And if you deaf, here's the link. Yeah, definitely my uh, my future, my vision is, you know, I see those trucks just rolling on the side of the road, pumping all that chemicals, and I just, I cry every time I see that. I mean, I hurt. It goes into our water system. I just see it trickling through the low E into our oceans where our kids is playing, and you know, my dream and my vision is to change that. And that one day we're going to replace that with steam statewide. And that's going to be not the in thing, but the thing. The regular. Yep, yeah, the regular. The normal, the regular as yeah. well. Yeah, like the steam vacuum that they get at the store. You can go rent one. Yeah, you just go over there and rent the steam weeder. Or like the steam irons for your clothes. Yeah. Remember, before you had to heat them on open fire. <laughs> and we just was a plate of steel. <laughs> Today, we get cookers in the steel <laughs> and get steam come out. <laughs> you know? So, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so awesome, bro. Great work. It's the kind of stuff that I'm happy to see in Hawaii. Yeah. Because for too long, we've been told one thing, and that was the wrong thing forever. <laughs> So mahalo for having the courage. To yeah, but stepping step up, man. Up. Yeah, but hasn't yeah. been easy, huh, Chance? Hasn't been easy. It's... Remember when we cleaned the the bus terminal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we're trying to change on generation, right? We tried to sanitize it right in the beginning of uh, COVID. COVID. Went and volunteered and and steam treated a two bus terminals. <laughs> what? And and wouldn't even believe for the bus the number one thing they could care less about it being sanitized. You know what they wanted? Gum removal. <laughs> okay, too that about was like the, the most important thing because I guess pressure washing doesn't remove the gum, but the hot water steam no problem. So it's real interesting. That's a that's I guess another another area of high sanitation. Problem. Yeah. Um, people are pilau, you know. I mean, we'll get the stadium contract for spray all the gum off all the chairs. <laughs> I was just thinking that about it. Like, hey, wait a minute. How are we gonna fund this? Thing? I got my time now. I mean, you know, if we can, we saw it was when it was new. Bruh. It was many shades. It was like black. You know what? And it was gray when we was done. You know Bruh. what? I mean, that's that's so true. The pressure washing does not remove the gum. 
and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna share my experience. <laughs> I'm sure, just you know, for one minute, my experience. Um, I was living in Maui in uh, the late, well, not the late, but the but 2000, uh, 2010, I was living in Maui, and um, I used to work at the airport. My kuleana was to Malama, uh, a lot of passenger boarding bridges, as well as the baggage carousels. And let me tell you, yeah, two years after um, Maui Wengo plant these passenger boarding, bridge, uh, boarding bridges, you know, I found out the price tag was 700 grand each, but, you know, it was super dirty. And I look at the logs, and it, you know, I see all the auto maintenance workers, and they all check them off. And then I come back next week, the gum's still there, <laughs> right? So you're right, the pressure washing does not. And I can tell you about people are pilau. <laughs> people are pilau, ba. So we normalize being pilau. It's like you see wow. it, and you don't need to do it. It's like regular. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah, did you see that shit right there? I guess, you know? I guess these people are just farming <laughs> microbes. I don't know. But... I mean, even, even every time we turn an event here, I swear to God, I find a diaper in a driveway. <laughs> oh. And it's like, dudes, you're at a farm. This is not even like a, this is like <laughs> somebody's home and you're just throwing your diapers out. This is the, the level of um, <laughs> self-respect. I, I let him go. I don't even know. <laughs> I let him go. That's all right. <laughs> you know the one. Speaking of diapers in TSA, <laughs> so I, I I used to have to so my one of my kids, couple of my kids, we had the clock diaper, yeah, and so then I would have to travel, and then bro, I had to bring back the diapers. We go on like one seven, eight, ten day trip, and then even though you you know you drop the turds or whatever that was inside there, I I a couple times I remember I seen the TSA the tear up. <laughs> you know, cause me, I guess I don't look like the I look like the kind of guy who you want to stuff. <laughs> then they find like this real well tied bags, you know, and then they're like, whoa, getting all excited, boom, open up, <laughs> got him, <laughs> got him. Oh, I'm, holding. I'm over there holding my son, trying to hold it all in. Here with the TSA, the same reason. Yeah, yeah. Before putting our tax money to work. <laughs> you know, because. Uh, <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, I've I've had my own, I've I've had my share of DSA run-ins too. And I try to avoid that. Is, I would always take a bag of cookies. You know, for some reason they single me out every time. Before now, before they single me out every time. Now, I just I guess I just look like everybody else. <laughs> hey, you look in the line. You look in the line. There's one huge guy in the line. Wow. I guess but, if we search him, we'll get more training. I don't know, it's like more square footage, right? There. Yeah. So I used to take a bag of chocolate chips that I baked, and then one time I took a batch of special cookies. And since then, they weren't allowed to, to <laughs> eat cookies <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but you oh, see, yeah. that's the way you, you create laws. I. That's the way you create rules. Yeah. <laughs> the grassroots level. He said Operation <laughs> Chocolate Chip Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <'em>. Got him. <laughs> You have no idea, Kuike. I, I was traveling a lot right when 9-11 happened. Wow. And right after 9-11, all of the Securitas security guards got like real guns. Wow. And all of a sudden had power. Yeah, yeah. And I remember I remember getting pulled out of line and searched by like old Filipino aunties, like full feeling me up, everything right there in line. Like was I was like, whoa. <laughs> that was that was that was that was pre-TSA. That was the three months before TSA. That was TSA highlight. <laughs> Some exciting travel. You know, speaking of which, travel, you've been going back and forth uh, to Maui. Mm -hmm. You've been um, you've been making solutions on this island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been applying them and using them on Maui. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people um, want to increase how much they use, but are unsure on how to uh, scale up. Can you share a little bit about, like, I mean, our understanding, you guys are running a pretty big scaled operation, mm -hmm. and um, that requires a lot of nutrients. You know, when I when I went up there um, to work with Uncle Bobby, I did mm -hmm. the math, and Uncle Bobby needed, like, <clears throat> hundreds of gallons of solutions. A, a day. I'm going to tell oh, you. Yeah, a day, a, most a day. likely. Yeah. A, most a likely day. a day. <laughs> you, know, ha you know, having the, the, the right to use... 300 acres, and if you was growing the full 300 acres, you're talking IBC totes. Yeah. Every day. Every day. You're talking IBC totes yeah. every day. 
So, which means you need a whole team that's a whole, making those solutions because I we made a couple team. totes and that shit ain't easy. It's not. It's not. Currently, I have about five totes of LAB that I cannot move because I don't own a fuck list. <laughs> 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 but you, if you like scale up, if you like scale up, right? If you like scale up, plan first. Yeah. If you know, if you know the ma- uh, the math for what it takes to create a gallon of solution. You, you you get your foot in the door, plan first, and I'm gonna tell you, if you get into the business of scaling up inputs, that's all you're gonna do. That is all you're gonna do. There is no time to scale up inputs, as well as farm. That is the largest struggle, and that is a freaking truth that nobody will tell you. Because why? Nobody on that KNF shit, none of those social media platforms have scaled up to the level yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Like who's providing for 300 acres? Who's providing for 500 acres? Who's providing inputs for 1,000 acres? Nobody. Mm-hmm. Why? It's because they're scared. Even even calling myself, you know who does the, the inputs in Kahana? Skyler. He lives nearby. He goes twice a week in the evening, early morning, and he sprays because yeah. we're not there in the primary times to spray. 100%. 100%. So if you want to scale up, let me just roll back. When I say I scared, I don't mean to offend anybody. No. But there's fear in all of this. Why? It's because get major kuleana. When you're creating inputs, you are creating life. You're literally breathing life into organisms, breeding them, doing whatever magic. Yeah. And then... Now, I, I say three things, right? House, food, water. These are the three basic things that you need to raise a family. Those are the three basic things that you need to make inputs. Where are you going to house these things and how you, what vessels you can use to house them in? Because, yeah, you can create them on vessel and rice pepper, but you leave them in the rain, the thing will spoil, going sour. So, house, food, water. What are you going to feed these organisms? You need sugar, so then they'll pet, uh, petrify, I mean, what was the word? Putrefy, you know, so make sure they get enough food, and you need more or less water. You got to control the humidity. Too much water going to create mold, then the mold going to jump in, a, you know, going to take over the house. So, again, all of these things, house food water. When I say you're scared, I, I don't mean that you're afraid of the kuleana per se. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of intimidated by the work. <laughs> you know, and doing it and knowing how much, you know, you gotta not just make it, now you get, since you made it, now you gotta pay attention to it. Right? And then there's all kinds of like little things that making sure that you care for it and and like you said, house it. And then if you scale up, it's size, it's weight. Right. Now you can't move it by yourself. I mean, the <laughs> trash can, I can barely almost not move by myself. <laughs> the tote. Are we laughing? So, and that's it, right? And when I say you're scared, I relate it back to his relative to raising one ohana. Yeah. And that's why, you know, not everybody, Mako, not everybody ready to take that leap, to have that kind of faith, to know that you put in the good work, you're going to get good results. Yeah. Maya kahana, maya kalawa, that if your work is neat, the results will be. You know, a lot of people know more of that faith in themselves. And that's why I describe it as being scared. So the same thing, the same mana, attention to detail, energy that it takes, time that it takes to raise an ohana, is the same thing you apply to making inputs at scale. That's why I say, if you're making inputs at scale, that's the only thing you're doing. If you're raising a family, that's the only thing you're doing. <laughs> Literally, that's the only thing you're doing. Nobody has time to raise a family and be a politician. Nobody has time to raise a family and travel the world. If you're raising a family, that's where raising majority one family. of going to go. Majority of your attention going to go. And that's not a bad thing either. No, no. What you pay attention to is what you love. And that's why. What's your guy's name again of the company? No, no, no. Aloha <laughs> Organic. And that's why. What's your guy's name of the company? Aloha Organic. It's, it's organic love. Yeah. Pure Straight love, bro. Pure love. No, it's funny that you say that because... 
one day while we were mixing solutions, I, I realized it was the same motions for Ho'ovali Ai. Uh. And then I was like, oh my God. We had a little bit <laughs> We drop everything. Moment. We realized, bro, we drop we're everything making bun- <gasps> We're making primordial slime. That's it. That is the foundation of life that feeds all, all these living things. And what an honor, bro. Wow. So, but that's it. I think it's line eight of the Kumulipo, right? Okavale vale ho okumu ho nua. It is the slime that establishes the earth. Right, and when our babies are coming out of the canal, slime. right, when they're being born, what comes first? The slime, and then life. That's exactly what we've been doing. That's exactly what I've been preaching, but nobody listening. <laughs> that's okay. We hear, we hear. No, but that's exactly it. This is nothing new for Kanaka. This is nothing new. But it's yeah new to be able to explain it to someone that understands it. And that's that's it. new. What what we're what we calling new is the discovery to bring consciousness to the world, because our kupuna never you know do this in English. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely never do them in Korean. <laughs> you know? So that's it. It's being able to bridge the gap and transfer to the uh, world, translate this information for the world. You know, um, back, such back a huge kuleana. Back in 2016, I attended. Uh, the, the summit for Korean natural farming in Hilo and Master Cho was there. <clears throat> While sitting in the crowd, you know, just doing my thing, I'm approached by Ken Koike. And he's like, Koike, um, I need your help. Uh, we need somebody to host Master Cho on Oahu. I'm just like, what do you mean you need somebody to host Master Cho? So you guys got this. Like, th- that was my initiation to Korean natural farming. <laughs> that was the first, I mean, not the first, you know, I was cruising with Joe. And before that, we was over, I was already farming. I never know the thing was called Korean natural farming. Right, right, right. Because, you know, I used to pick up um, the, the wheat bran for feed. And then would have so much feed that the thing would just grow my seed. We're going to spread them on the doodle. You know what I mean? We're going to spread them on the shed. Like, hey, look, the thing will smell. You know, so. But that was my first time I met Master Cho. And I was just like, oh, wait, bro, let me give you a call. I called back. Call Kapea. I'm just like, hey, Kapea, we need, we have one day with Master Cho. You think we can pull them off? He's like, fuck yeah, let's do this. So that day, Master Cho came back and we, we flew back a while. Master Cho met us. And we, we had him for one day. I took him out to Ahualaka and I took him to, and then I help him off the va'a, right? We sell Kanehonu Moku out to Ahualaka on the ahu, on the sandbar. Yeah, and then I, I, I stand up there and I explain, I turned his attention back to land. And then I explained to him all of the ahupua, all of the pu'us, and I explained to him exactly where we are, right? Ahua laka, and uh, who's laka, right? What's uh, her kuleana, right? And why is laka's ahu in the middle of the ocean? She don't belong here. And guess what he says? He says, back where he's from in Korea, they have a legend. And he's just, he explains through the translator that this is that place. He believes that this is that place. He said, if you look at the mountains... The koalaos is all jagged. He goes like that, it's all jagged. You know, and then he, what he describes is that is millions and millions of years of erosion that happened, and this is where it's at. And he said that legend was shared back where I'm from in Korea, and he totally believes that this is that place, right? And he goes like this. He reaches down. He reaches down. He digs, he scratches the surface. Yeah, because it's semi-low tide, we halfway. So that's the only exposed scratches the surface and then he digs down into the gray black stuff that none of us like. Yeah, all that hauna stuff, all that stink stuff, none of us like. And then he, he told me, open your hand. And I open my hand and he, he puts it on my hand. He said, you need nothing more but this. Because I explained to him who Laka is and who, who is Laka and what's her kuleana. She's the aku of all the undergrowth, right? Our kupuna tell us, no hana ke akui kana hele hele. Right, that the Aku live and thrive in the Nahele Hele. And what is the Nahele Hele? It's not the trees or the forest. It's the undergrowth. Science tells us that that undergrowth is in charge and responsible for the fungal network. Yeah, in Korean natural farming, what are we focusing on? The microorganism, the funguses, right? Yeah. So we can breathe life back into earth. So instead, he said, instead of going up Malka and collecting all of this stuff, he said, you have the answer right here. That's all you need. Whoa. Okay, funny you say that. Because, yeah. you know, they get the problem with all these local eaters, yeah? They get all this sludge on the bottom. 
But yeah. And I said, bro, <laughs> the freaking sludge at the bottom is the fertilizer, you guys. You got to pull that out. And that is what you could use to remediate yucca in a I mean, thriving industry. So they're doing it in Japan. Yeah, where they go to um, the river mounts and they go and dredge the river Harvest. mounts. Mine the topsoils. Mine the topsoils and take it back to land and farm on it. Why? Put them back. It's because you get all the minerals, get all the microorganisms, everything that you would ever need. That you cannot get in one labeled bottle. Yep. So, Master Cho leans over and he also said, You are no longer my student. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said, There's nothing more that I can teach you that your kupuna haven't already. So that's it, Kako. Daruhoi. Daruhoi. Yeah, we're always looking as a society, as a people, we're always looking for others for the answer. Look within. Kaku. Within. Within. Everything you need has already been provided for you. We never sell, you know, across the largest uh, continent in the world so you could be here in, in paradise and do nothing about it. That's my two minutes. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to scale up your production, yeah. Message me on IG, Wahine YU. If you don't know how to spell, Google it. Yeah, Wahine YU, I said slow hey guys, for the guys in, in the, the back. In the link above. <laughs> Hit the link above right now. It'll take you to his Instagram. No. Reach out to this guy. He's going to he yeah. teach you how to scale up on this well, in, in a way that you might be surprised. So I, I, I'm a terrible teacher. <laughs> yeah, if you like me to teach you, you better be ready to get, catch cracks and get lickings. <laughs> But honestly, today I'm more that kind of energy. Aye, aye, aye. All my stuff is focused on my ohana. But well, what I can do is share. Because that's how our kupuna, yeah, raised a great nation. Aye. Yeah, is they would share. Everything they had, they share. So I have no problem, has never had a problem, I will never have a problem sharing. Yeah, because we cannot hoard mana. Aye. Ike. We cannot hoard Ike. We must share it. That's the only way we'll uplift each other. Yeah. Hashtag uplift. Hashtag. That's the only way we will uplift each, uh, each other and take us to the promised land. You got to share kako. That's the only way we establish a kako is if we share. Trust and kako, share. Yeah, kako, right, establishes a sharing of space. Immeasurable. Yeah, the sharing of space. So, all for sharing space, gentlemen. Yes, sir. And mama. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Yee! Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the color coach, bro. Color coach, huh? You know what? Disclaimer, Kako. I've said it for years. Yeah, no, believe me. I don't know nothing. <laughs> Go, do your own due diligence. Oh, yeah. Get off the couch and get out there and start planting and watch what <laughs> happens. Because that's the other part to all of this. <laughs> you need to watch and observe what Heard that, guys. Yes, get off uh, the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Four guys holding on to a <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Seems like this kind of agriculture dialogue, Kuik, is, is, is really necessary. You know, and just following, not even trends, just the people that are, are putting this kind of information out there. Um, I think that the aim, it's like they say, you dream too small. And in this situation, um, first of all, the need for independent subsistence agriculture is stupid ridiculous mm. right and then and and the reality is the beautiful thing about this natural farming is that you know it really should start in your kitchen and your dining room table and then reverse engineer back to your aina and that living relationship ends up being ends up being the basis on how you scale Right, and just that that kind of mindset in agriculture and connecting all the little systems is, I think, more pertinent on an island. You know, it's like we're all connected, but this type of agriculture is real obvious what those connections are. And I feel like the more that as a community we gravitate to it, I think some of the politics, unfortunately, in the in the. Uh, commercial chemical ag world the politics are just as rich in the natural farming agricultural world yeah oh, story of my life yeah <laughs> yep. story of my life 
So, you know, I think the, the only way to overcome those politics is to increase the number of players. Yeah, because it seems like right now all the resources is tied up with a bunch of old dudes that that have a monopoly on on uh, getting to the table first. You know, and, and nothing wrong. They oh, these guys been waiting long time, but the yeah. reality is like they've been handed this. Yeah. Let um, me ask you this right now, and for the folks on the couch, <laughs> uh, how do you drink Clorox or bleach? Every bleach? every time I turn the tap on Correct. inside my house. Correct. And why is that? And why is that? Mm. And why is that? Because it's diluted. Yeah. If you have a system that is toxic. Dilution is the key. And um, if you look at this link, uh, they're going to give you the, the, the correct dilutions for all the inputs available at Hello Organic. You know, Kuike, you say that, and, and it reminds me of the time that um, I was up at the border water supply tank up the street. Mm -hmm. And then the guy working it said, you know, Daniel, if ever there's a problem, never, ever drink from the tank. <laughs> Because it has the highest concentration of the chemicals right yep. there. And we're, we're, you know, 100 feet from where the purest water oh. on the planet is coming out. And the first Magical. thing we do Magical. Mm -hmm. is put chemicals. <laughs> well, actually, this is what he told me. He goes, hey, Daniel, nobody really knows this. But the first 100 feet of pipe, anything was predates this date, the first 100 feet is all lead. So it comes right out of the most beautiful, incredible aina, right into lead pipes, right into a freaking Clorox water tank. And then that <laughs> is the freaking, you know, olai kawai. And, and that's the continual per perpetuation of ethnogenocide for those of us who are conscious and watching this. Yeah. Is they, they fool you into believing, yeah, that everything's safe. But the first thing they do, 100 feet, out the Vaha, of the Mauna, out, out of the tunnels, the water tunnels, is put it in lead. Why is that? Tell me the bottled water supply in the city and county government cannot afford 100 feet of PVC. Tell me they cannot afford the labor to replace that pipe. You know what they cannot afford? To you, being informed. Because the more of us know, the more going to be talked about and the more going to be done. Right. And that's the bottom line. I bet you 99.9% .9 of the people viewing this never know that. And that's that's a big problem. Again, back to the point earlier. Attrition, guys. They're winning. Uncle yeah. Skyler, what you need, Uncle Skyler? No more. Who wants cooked taro? No, oh, now. I want to get raw taro. No more cooked taro. And the other brother that's eating. Oh, they just came. Jordan, <laughs> you get five pound cooked taro. <laughs> Take them out of my pot. Why is there no kalo? Because the demand is great. Oh, okay. And who's this other guy grabbing taro? <laughs> Jordan, he just came. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess you got to steal it. Guys, guess what? It's a Thursday. We don't have enough taro for everybody. So we're calling all the taro farmers out there. <laughs> Get on your planting. Kanu <laughs> Yohuli. Talk to your grandpa. Work your deals. <laughs> Lay it on down. Uh, yeah. Alodio title lands. Yeah. You know, time to go back and till that soil and plant that gold because the demand is never, ever going to be less. And guess what? If you don't like planting, get into fertilizer making because as we scale up as a community, more people are going to need the fertilizers. I mean, right? So you can just, you can do that at home, which is cool. You can improve them. The farm on my way, <laughs> he's there on Oahu making fertilizer. So... You know, this play space, this concept that, that everybody got to do everything is only in Uncle Kawe's mind. Because he's the only guy I know that's badass for do everything and then laugh at you while you're not doing them. So if you're regular like me and struggling for keep up with these hammers, know that even the littlest cog has a place in this agriculture industry. And you just got to apply yourself and be consistent of, yeah. of anything that I see. Right? And... And let's really quickly, I, I want to touch up on this because I think, right, Uncle Chance is self-employed. Uh, Kuike, um, 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 he's unemployable. So is Kawe <laughs> and so is myself, right? And when you reach this point of unemployability, <laughs> right, it's because your ethics and your value exceed listening to people that don't have ethics or values. Yeah, so you, you end up having to carve your own path. Many people have come to me and said, Daniel, how did you do it? 
how did you break away? So first of all, it always some major something happened, one revelation, one epiphany, one accident, when something happened. And then usually time and consistency. Right. And those things is, is usually how you, you begin to, to stay the course. Of course, we can all tell you that it helps if your wife has a job with medical insurance. Thanks, babe. Thank yeah, you. Love you, hon. Love you, honey. Love you. <laughs> Have a chance quiet. No, no. <laughs> you get a good wife, can't you? Uh, 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 <laughs> but, you know, the reality, the reality is that, that we face today and making this transition is you cannot transition alone. You have to have a purpose and then you usually have to have a partner. And as you transition, even in the transition, you know, call it. I struggle. I do this so much of my life and struggle. And the last three years struggling with Kawit has brought us more success. Yeah, the struggle together has brought more success than the struggle I think I can do by myself. Aye. And, you know, it, it's the reality is you can't. But also, why would you want to? I think we're at that point in time, guys, yeah, where um, I think uh, let's be the examples to put down our differences and... um. You know, take a real good deep thought and one 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 reference to the future of our children and um, one quick look back in the past and uh, you know time over time like uh, holding grudges and stuff not any good for anything and um, I'm sure whatever it may be we can get past it uh, to raise because it's a kako thing yeah. And uh, if we can be focused on something like that, and that's kind of what we've been focused on is this food uh, sovereignty and food insecurity and um, providing everybody the, the ability and the relationship first. Because um, without that, it's kind of hard to uh, encourage and then talk to the next kids about doing something that really, really is not popular <laughs> and not mm, the highest most income making jobs and uh, things that you tell your kid go be yeah you tell them doctor lawyer that kind of stuff <laughs> you never was out there encouraging your kid for go try find one way for make them work and be on pharma uh, um, but that's what we're doing <laughs> and we hope that we can be an example first of pili and and mihi and forgiveness and an example of when you work together you do great things and uh, stuff that like God come happy for and blessed yeah and doors open that by yourself the thing wouldn't open thank you for being here you guys yeah like together these doors have been opened together Uncle L thank you for capturing this kind of stuff it's important I see now how important <laughs> Only took four episodes. <laughs> I got him, guy. You can teach him old dog new tricks. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, happy belated birthday, Uncle Carl. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, 199. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. 199. Yes, sir. Mahalo to Chance and Kuiki Boat for yes, making sir. a Blessing. time Blessing. here. Blessing. And, um, you know, once again, if you have landscape needs, you want to go chemical free, Chance Korea, Malama Aina Landscapes, your man. If you're looking yep. to scale up your natural farming um, identity, talk to Kuike. There's a lot of people out there that um, want to teach something. Not a lot of them have something to teach um, or share. So I, I will definitely tell you when Kuike is talking, you should you should make sure your hearing aid is turned all the way up. Uh, my name is Uncle Daniel. We're heading out. We got Uncle Kyle in the house. Catch you on the couch next week. Yeah, you. Ugh. Yes, uh... I am strictly loving, love is all that I can give Never wanna do no wrong or spread no bad intention Me not do with personal greed, me not do with no money thing I am strictly do it with love, and love is all that I can give Me no wanna silly rabbits play them tricks on me Babylon can come and disrupt this, yeah, frequent